to show how to use a mending loom, also called a speed weave loom, to mend a hole in a sock. So this part is the disc. One side is usually rounded and you want that up towards the hole. This is just a, a commercial sock that is getting very threadbare and starting to get a hole. You can see right there, this is just about to break. So I'm going to mend it in advance. So I want to have this reasonably centered on here. And then I'm going to use a rubber band to secure it. Oops, didn't quite get it in there. There's like a little notch all the way around these that holds it in it pretty nicely. So here I've got this. Now I'm going to add my loom and I like to go on a diagonal or bias compared to the knitted fabric. That's going to help keep some stretch in there. And then my second rubber band goes around the back. There's a little ledge in the back. And that's a good thing to look for when you're shopping for these. Some of them, instead of the ledge on the back, have little tabs that stick out and those just don't work very well. They're pretty sharp and you break. Now for yarn, I'm going to use a um, mending yarn. This was sold to me as a cashmere and nylon mending yarn, but it had a label that I could not read. So I am not entirely sure what it is. Um, I went back to this shop I got it at and bought all the colors that they had left that I liked, um, but I haven't been able to find it online either. So we'll give it a try. I like to use this doubled because it's quite fine. And I'm going to have fun and do a two color pattern because why not? So first up, I have my doubled light color. And I'm going to poke this in way down at the bottom here and come up where I want the bottom of my men to be. This is kind of a long hole, so it's going to be a long diamond. And pull this through, leaving a little bit extra. I'll weave those in later on. And then I'm going to wrap this around one of my hooks. Then at the bottom, I'm going to take a sideways stitch. And I'm actually going to take a kind of a big stitch here because I'm going to be alternating my two colors. So now I have two warp threads. The warp threads go the long way. And I'm going to skip a hook and do the following hook. Now it's really easy to drift for me upwards, for you maybe it's downwards as you're doing this. So one thing you can do is use something to measure and give yourself some kind of a marker like a pin just to help you know what's even. So now I have something here to work with for a bottom line. So I'm going to put my needle in close to where I came out. I'm going to skip over a bit because I'm leaving room for my other color in between. And we're going to keep doing this. Oops, and that looks like it got a little tangled on my pin. So if you are using a pin, keep an eye out for that. You could also use a, a fabric marking pencil, one of the ones that disappears, and that'll be fine. So here I'm going to skip a hook, catch my next hook, and we're going to repeat this across. Then last time for this color, so I'm skipping a hook, I'm doing the second to last one, and the final one will be my other color as well. And then here I'm just going to again poke this off to the side, and then this color's done. And we're going to get to the second color. So second color here, same basic idea, coming in low and out where I want this to be. Leave a little tail, and I'll deal with these tails at the end. A lot of these how-to videos do not show you how to finish, and I promise I'm going to show you the finishing at the end, too. I'll also say the instructions that come with these looms are usually not very good, so don't worry if you are here because the instructions didn't make sense to you as they were written. That puts you in the majority. I don't need that anymore, so let's just get rid of it because it's getting tangled. Alright, so now for this last one, instead of stitching sideways like I have been, I'm going to go in where I normally would and stitch upwards, just a small stitch here. 
So now we have our warp threads, which are the long ones. I've got these two needles, and notice these are nice long needles. Um, these ones are sold as uh, sashiko needles, but there are other styles as well. And what I'm going to do first is I'm going to move these hooks so these change which threads are on top. So you can see if I do that, this first thread is on top and the last thread's on the bottom. When I turn it, the first thread is now on the bottom and the last thread is on top. I'm going to take not the point of my needle, but the eye of the needle. And way up here by the hooks, I'm going to run it under my threads. Every other one is held upwards by the hook. So it makes it pretty easy to go through. And then I can push it down to the bottom and pull it through. Not tight. I want to leave a little extra there. Then I'm going to take a small stitch in place at the side here, starting right at the bottom, real small. Pull that through. And now I'm going to change what's called the shed, which is the space between warp threads with some being held up and some being held downwards. So I'm pushing it to the left before I go to the left again with the eye of the needle. If you try working with a point, you'll probably stitch through your warp threads and you won't be able to then push it down. And here I'm just going to push down that previous row and pull this through leaving it as usual, just a little bit loose. Now I'm going to change colors. So when I did the warp, it's two ends of each, and now I'm going to do two picks of each color to do my pattern. So change the shed. I'd like to push the hooks to the right before my needle goes to the right, and vice versa. It just makes it easy for me to remember which way I'm going. And of course the light colors are a little easier to see, so if this is your first one, try a contrasting color. It can look kind of cool and be a lot easier for you as you figure out the process. So small vertical stitch here. Then I'm going to change my shed hooks to the left before my needle goes to the left. And this is where the long needle helps because you've got enough to hold on to here. And now it's time to change. So I have not yet done my stitch here on this side, so I'm going to do it now. You can decide to do the stitch at the end of the pass, or you can decide to do it before you start a pass. It doesn't matter when, as long as you do it. If you don't do those vertical stitches through the fabric, your woven piece won't be attached. And I don't want to pull it tight, but you can see one of those was a little looser than the other, so I do want it to be even. And that just keeps happening, not quite sure why. Alright, with my dark color now, I'm going to take my vertical stitch, because I have not done that yet. Change my shed to the right and weave to the right. A little vertical stitch over here. Change my shed to the left and weave to the left. You can see I'm going to run out of my yarn. That is fine. I find if you have a really long piece, you're going to get tangled, so it's better to take a manageable piece and then plan to add on when you need to. So here I'm just about out. So I'm going to take one pass here and then I'm going to switch to a new one. I'll show you how I do that. So I am pretty much out of yarn. I have some options. I could leave this to weave in later or I can bring it down. I'm going to go around this one and then down here I'm following this light color warp thread so that it matches goes exactly where that was going, under where it was under, over where it was over, and that'll blend in really nicely. I'm 
in here. This big long needle isn't going to fit all the way through, that's fine. I'm just going to cut this, free my needle, and then I can cut the extra off too. And then I'm going to cut a new piece. It does not have to be as long as it was because I've done all the warping and about a third of the weft. I'll get this back in my needle. And I can do the opposite of what I just did to start this. So I'm going to go in a little bit and run this along a different one of my light colored warp threads. And that's going to get me to part way across. You see I'm not at the edge here, which is fine. So I'm going to pull this through and then I'm going to follow my old last pass to go to the end. And there's a little bit sticking out. It's totally fine. Some of that's probably going to pull in, but I'm just going to cut off that bit that was too tall. And then we're back in business. I'm going to take a little sideways, sorry, vertical stitch here, not sideways. Oops. You'll notice I get tangled sometimes too. Hopefully that'll help keep you from feeling bad if you get tangled up. You will. This is slightly complicated, but also really small. Um, so some parts of it might be a little awkward to you, get tangled, it's fine. Just get it where it needs to be and move on. I think I've got enough here for one more pass, and I'm going to do that because I want to tuck in this end on the other side just to avoid bulk all on one side. Oops, I forgot. I forgot that you're going to forget this sometimes too. I forgot to beat down the previous pass. There we go. So in here, I'm going to go around this warp thread, and then I'm going to run it vertically down that warp thread, going under what it goes under and over what it goes over. It should be pretty easy to find those because they're what's on top. And again, it's getting kind of small, so I'm just going to cut my thread and then I'll free my needle. how you can give new life to um, things that are used. And this is just a you know commercial sock. They probably came in a three pack probably five to 10 years ago, but um, most of it's holding up just fine. And especially with things like this that like we have a bit of a, um, a nylon in them. It's good to use them as long as you can because these fibers are around forever. Now I did that stitch a little earlier than I normally do. And I almost kept going with that color because I was chatting with you. So I'm going to make sure that I remember to switch. You probably notice pretty quickly if you didn't switch colors, because all of a sudden you'd be losing this beautiful pattern. So we're getting towards the top here and I want to make sure to go all the way to the top 
it does get a little harder. By now you have some experience in muscle memory, so it's not as hard as if we started here, but it is a little bit tricky. So just know that if it's not yet getting tricky, you definitely haven't gone far enough, but we want to go all the way to the top of these hooks. This part is not annoying to you. You probably haven't gone far enough. It really should be a tight squeeze to fit in there. All right, so here we go. We're done with the weaving portion and I'm going to release one of my rubber bands and turn these hooks so that they're upright and then I'm gonna tilt this off. So the way I wanna do it is tilt this so it goes up and away from me and you can see how that just, the loops slide right off the hook if you're gentle. Now I'm going to opt to do this with the darker color because it'll blend more. I'm going to catch a bit of the sock and then one of these loops. And then I'm going to catch a bit of the sock and one of these loops. And continue doing that across. And this is attaching because currently it's not attached at the top, so I need to do this to stick it down. This last one sometimes feels big, but you can always tug on the yarn tails there and then I'll snug it down a bit. Okay, so then I'm going to poke this to the inside of my sock. Um, I'm going to poke this other one to the inside of my sock too. And then I'm going to release these rubber bands. Be careful they don't go flying on you. And I'm going to turn the whole thing inside out, being careful not to poke myself on those needles. There we go. So here my needles are free. Pull this through. I also have some long strands from where I started and I'm going to should just grab an extra needle here and pull these out as well. This is just my anchored threads from the very beginning. And then I'm gonna deal with all these yarn tails. So one option, if you have a hole in the middle, uh, which I didn't really have much of a hole, you could go into uh, kind of fill that in and attach the opening of the hole to the back of the weaving. Another option is to weave in and out alongside those little stitches that you did. I go pretty far with this because it isn't the most secure, so going farther helps. You can even just go through the fabric that you've got there. It doesn't have to be your weaving yarn. And then cut off whatever's left. So that one's good. Now this guy is too short for my needle to fit very well, so I'm going to do this slightly differently and go around and around because I can do this all in one go. And there's some small stitches in here, so I'm just gonna do my best. So I went a little off path there. So sometimes I'm catching my weaving yarn, which is the purples, and sometimes I'm catching the sock. It's gonna work out either way. I'm not super worried about it. And then I can pull through this yarn and cut off what's there. I also have the ones from where I started, so I can just thread those up and do the same thing with these guys. Notice here I grabbed a shorter needle because that'll be a little easier for me to work with these because I didn't leave them super long because I didn't need to. So 
So you notice once I went back and forth, here I'm going around and around, either one's okay. Um, if it's short, I tend to go around and around so I don't have to pull through quite so much. And then we'll do that with this guy and then we'll be done. So this took a bit of time for sure, but I find it really enjoyable. And now these socks are going to last for probably a couple more years instead of just going right into the rag bin. All right, so this is the inside. And then this is my beautiful mend on the outside. And because we went on the bias, I still have a lot of stretch in both directions. So that's still going to work really nicely as a sock heel. Oops, here's a little tail I need to snip. It's from where I added on some yarn. There we go. Well, I hope you enjoyed it.